Hey guys, Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist. Today I'm going to talk about dermatology sunscreen once again, but I wanted to mention that you may not recognize it. Yep, it's a brand new look here. It's a whole new aesthetic. The brand has reached out to me and said that they wanted to change the look and it looks very sleek and modern. It has this gold slash rose gold trimming here. It looks beautiful. Nice sleek white bottle here, robot white. And I like the look. It's very different from the previous reviewed item that I did. And my biggest question to them was, is this any different? Did the formulation change in any way? So I just wanted to talk about this. I was the first person they sent this new bottle um, out to. So I just wanted to give you guys an update. I was gifted this obviously. And I just wanted to talk about this sunscreen because I've talked about it before in the past. I've reviewed it very favorably in the past and I still like it quite a bit. So as you guys know, it's an SPF 46. As a dermatologist, I recommend SPF 30 and above, and it's zinc oxide as well as octanoxate. So it's not fully mineral. It does have one chemical UV filter octanoxate, which is a UVB blocker. As you guys already know, SPF 46 is in relation to the UVB protection, UV burns. We wanna prevent burns as much as possible with your sunscreens to minimize or avoid DNA damage from UV radiation that can lead to squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, and even the most deadly dreadful melanoma. So UVA is also important to block. This has UVA coverage. Zinc oxide is a great broad spectrum blocker. So it'll block UVA as well as UVB. This is also packed with nice ingredients. So I, I said in my previous review, this is great for dry skin because it has nice ingredients that are good for dry skin or dehydrated skin. It has hyaluronic acid, it has glycerin. Those are really great hydrating ingredients because they're humectants that draw in water and retain water. It also has an antioxidant, tocopherol acetate or vitamin E, which is an antioxidant that will help block free radical damage from forming in your skin from UV radiation or pollution. That's a nice antioxidant that I like in my skincare products, especially sunscreens. The other thing that it has that I really appreciate is niacinamide. Niacinamide is a vitamin B3 anti-inflammatory ingredient that is great in our skincare, either cleansers or people are buying it in serums. In serums, I'm still not sure how I feel about serums with niacinamide in it because too much niacinamide, too much of a good thing. I've seen people get really bad contact dermatitis rashes on the face. So I like it mixed in to my cleansers or my retinols or sunscreens. So retinols I've mentioned in the past with retiniacinamide would be Olay Regenerous uh, Retinol 24, CeraVe Resurfacing Retinol Serum or the Skin Renewing Retinol Serum. Those have niacinamide in it. I also like Murad's uh, Night Serum as well with retinol that has niacinamide as well. This has niacinamide. So I say if you have acne prone skin, very nice for that because it will help at decreasing oil production. It will help with acne, prevent acne. I love that for people with rosacea too because it's anti-inflammatory. So if you have rosacea, uh, which is usually flushing, redness, and even acne rosacea where you get red pimples on the center of your face, especially around the nose and inner cheeks, that's acne rosacea. Niacinamide is a great friend for you. It's a nice friend for a lot of people. Although there are people who will say that niacinamide they can't tolerate. And that is that does happen. Too much of a good thing, you know, people can't tolerate. So this still has a niacinamide. I reached out to Dermatology and they said, no, they didn't change the formulation at all, guys. This is the tinted sunscreen. So it's a moisturizing sunscreen is what they branded as and it says protect, glow, prevent. So let's open this up. The rose gold slash gold trim continues onto the nozzle. It's a nice pump. The tint I have mentioned before I like because it's not too tinted where it's gonna stain the inside of my mask. And it's very lightweight and sheer still. If you want something more with a tint or matte finish though, this might not be for you. If you want something a little bit more tinted, there's a super group matte screen. Uh, CeraVe has a tinted sunscreen that's much more tinted where it can stain the inside of your mask quite a bit. So this one here, a nice tint, not, it's more on the subtle side, very toned down. I'm gonna put some on my face here. The pump works very well. One finger length, I'll put on the side of my face here. Yep, feels very familiar. Feels great, smells the same. 
So half of my face here with the tint. Okay, so now that's all rubbed in, what do you guys think? I think it's still great, lightweight, not too tinted. Again, I mentioned that it doesn't stain the inside of your mask. If you want something more with the tint, this might be a little too subtle for you. I do like that it's now a robot white cap because I really didn't like seeing the inside clear cap being all stained with the tinted sunscreen. It just looked really messy. This looks much cleaner, so I don't have to see all the tinted sunscreen uh, on the inside of the cap. I will talk about soon their other new name for their serum. It's not a new serum, but they did change the name it's the vitamin C, E, and F. It used to be the CE Ferulic Serum. So now it's gonna be um, uh, the vitamin C, E, and F, okay? So I'll be talking about that soon in another video and reviewing that because I've not reviewed that before. Again, this, I have to give it a thumbs up. Things haven't changed. It still has the broad, broad spectrum aspect with the zinc oxide, octanoxate, and it does have um, some tint or iron oxides, which help block blue light or visible light that you get from the sun. Or there, you could even say it's blocking the blue light that we're getting exposed on a daily basis from our screens. But then uh, that's also controversial on how much that is affecting us in real life. And is it really cumulative blue light exposure? Is it causing that free radical damage that we worry about, causing photo aging? If you have hyperpigmentation, I do recommend blocking blue light and visible light in general. So. Um, tinted sunscreens have iron oxides in it. This one you can see on the ingredient list does have iron oxide. This is still a worthy duplicate of Elta MD UV Clear, which you see on social media. A lot of dermatologists will mention that, will mention that UV Clear by Elta MD is their holy grail. Why is that? It's lightweight. It has the same ingredients, zinc oxide and octanoxate. It's so lightweight. It blends in so nicely. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin. The octanoxate helps it be lightweight while giving more of a, a broad spectrum coverage with the UVB side of things. But it's just really a nice sunscreen without the fragrance. It's not irritating. People do talk about it pilling. I don't find any issues with this pilling at all. So I love both sunscreens. Just know that they're not water resistant. So if you're gonna go jump in the pool, the ocean, go for a run, wear something that's water resistant. These are more for everyday use, like going to the office or going for a walk, a casual walk outside. This is a good sunscreen for that. In terms of uh, octanoxate, that's a very controversial ingredient right now because it has been alongside with oxybenzone. Sunscreen sales containing oxybenzone or octanoxate has been banned in Hawaii, my home state, uh, because they worry about the health of the coral reefs there. This is a very controversial topic because laboratory settings wise, they pump a lot of of these ingredients around coral reefs and they found that it can bleach coral. But in the real world setting, how many people are actually wearing sunscreen? Are we using enough sunscreen? A lot of us underdo it. And is it gonna build up in concentrations that are harmful and really cause harm to the coral reefs? I'm not gonna talk about that, but that's just the big question is, in the real world setting, is that gonna happen? People do argue that it might not be a real um, concern. But in general, if you wanna respect the islands, I would say try to avoid those ingredients for now. And also, you know, the this is even water resistant to begin with anyway. So definitely go with something water resistant. I hope this video was helpful. I know I did talk about this before. I gave it a nice, good review before. I still love this sunscreen. I still use it very often. Uh, dermatology gifted me this to talk about and thank you dermatology for giving me this and I'm one of the first to get it as well That's really awesome. Please comment down below if you've tried this sunscreen. Let me know your thoughts Also, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel and thanks for your support guys. Love you all. Peace